Okay, class, today we're going to be doing graphing logarithmic equations, so make sure you have that sheet out. So one way to graph a logarithmic function is to first rewrite it as an exponential sentence, and this is what we're going to do most of the time. And then second, we're going to use the rewriting equation to complete the table by using y values to find x values. Now, why am I using y values to find x values? That's correct, because once I switch them and I turn into an exponential, an exponential is the inverse of a log, and a log is the inverse of an exponential. So your x becomes your y. So we're used to using y value, I mean x values, but in this case, we're going to use y values. So the first, and then after I do that, I'm going to plot the points and connect them with the curve. So the first thing I'm going to do is if I have y equals log base 2 of x, how would I rewrite that? That's correct. It's going to be 2 to the y power equals x. So now it's easy for me to plug in my y's and figure out what my x is, right? For instance, if I plug in a negative 2, I'm going to get a 0.5. If I plug in a negative 1, I'm going to get a point. I mean, I'm going to get a 0.25. If I plug in a negative 1, I'm going to get a 0.5. If I plug in a 0, I'm going to get, that's correct, anything to the 0 power is 1. If I plug in a 1, I'm going to get a 2, so on and so forth. So now that I have those points, I can plug those points on my graph, understanding that my x and y have already been switched. Now, this graph is considered the parent function for logarithms. This is the one they always use. So what would my domain be here? So when I'm trying to find my domain, guys, look here. What is my x limited to? My x's are all greater than 0. And what is my range equal to? My range goes from the bottom all the way to the top, my y, so it's any real number. So now we're going to do the same thing for the second one. Now remember, I'm going to compare it to what? I'm going to compare it to this because that is considered my parent function. So everything I compare it to is going to be compared to that. So now I know that I can rewrite log base 3 of x as what? That's correct. 3 to the y power equals x. Now, I'm going to go ahead and put my y values, because I'm going to plug them in for my x. And then if I plug them in, these are the numbers I'm going to get. So now, if I graph those coordinates, what do I notice? How do I notice that this graph And this graph relate. This graph is, what has happened to the second graph? That's correct. It has compressed. It's a vertical compression. Now I'm going to go on to the next sheet. Remember to pause here if you need time to write everything down. Okay, now we're on the second sheet. Now I know I skipped the one at the bottom, but I want you to take a moment to work on that on your own. And tell me because of the way the graph looks, what comparison is there? What actually happened to the graph? And be able to tell me that tomorrow. So now I'm looking at number four, I want to graph these. Now these look a little bit different now because now I have an argument that is x minus three, correct? I have two parts of my argument. So if I rewrite this, what will that look like? I know I'm going to have two to the power of y equals x minus three. And I would solve that as a normal equation. I would get x by itself. So to get x by itself, I have 2 to the y power plus 3. So now I would plug in these values to see what I get. And this is what I would get. So now I'm going to plot those coordinates, which are my x and y's, and that's going to give me my logarithmic function. Now, if I looked at how this compared to the first graph we did, what do you notice? Go ahead and flip back for a moment and notice how that compares to your other graph. What did it do? That's correct. It translated three units to the right. And we're going to get into this later on, but think about it. Was that your H or was that your K? Because it's in there with my X and it moved left to right, that means that it is my, that's correct, that's my H. We'll talk about that more later on. Okay, now let's look at number five. On number 5, I have y equals log base 2 of x plus 4. So if I rewrite that, I'm going to have 2 to the y value equals x plus 4. Remember, my goal is to isolate my variable. So what do I have to get rid of? The 4, which I would, that's correct, subtract 4 from both sides. And then I'm going to plug in my values to see what I'm returned. 
So now when I look at the graph, how does this graph compare? It translates four units to the left. And you can also go ahead and do the one at the bottom and see how that's going to change it. But I want you to notice at the bottom that your three is outside the parentheses, which makes it your, that's correct, that's your K. So I want you to think about how does K move up and down. So now we're going to go on to the next page. We'll talk about that one more in class tomorrow. We're going to go on to the next page. Now the great thing about our calculators here is logarithm functions in base 10 can be graphed using a calculator. So in the given window, it's telling us to sketch the graph of the common logarithmic function. And then it wants to know how does this graph compare to the graph of y equals log base 2 of x? Why is it asking me to compare to this graph here? Because that's considered my parent function. Okay, so if I have, let me fix this right quick, guys. That should be highlighted. If I compare this graph to the other graph, on my first screen, what do I notice? We're on my first page. Both contains the point one zero, and the common log graph appears to be vertically compressed of the logarithmic parent function. So it's a vertical compression. So let me just show you quickly how to type this in your calculator. So I'm going to put my calculator up on my screen. And I can go to y equals, and I just want you familiar with this, even if you don't have a calculator at home. I'm going to go to my computer screen, and I'm going to tell it log, which is the button next to the 7, and I'm going to tell it of x, because I know that it's automatically con uh, considered base 10. Then I can simply hit my graph. Now, they're telling you to change your window, which is why they look a little bit different. I just want you to be familiar with how to plug it in. So now let's take a look at number 8. So for number 8, if I wanted to plug these in, what would I need to do? I'm going to go to my calculator. Now I'm going to plug the first one in, and then I'm going to go down, and I'm going to plug the next graph in, which is 3 log of x. And then, okay, so for the second one, I'm going to enter. 3 log of x, and then I have 5 log of x, and then I have negative 1.5 log of x. Now remember what I showed you about how you can make these look different if you're really trying to see which one you started off with? So I can always bold one of these. Let me go up to the front one just so I can remind you how to do that. I can always go over there and hit bold so that when I graph it, I can see it better. Okay. Now also remember what I told you about looking at their graph and looking at their window and seeing what their window is and changing yours. So we're going to do that now just to make sure you recall. So I'm going to go to my window, and I can see that I'm, my min is a negative 2, and my max is a positive 10, and I'm counting by 1s. My y min is a negative 5, and my y max is a 5, in case you're wondering why your graph don't look exactly like theirs. And now you'll see my graph looks exactly like their graph looks. And what do I notice all these graphs have in common right here? They all go through that point one zero. They all have that common point. But they all appear to be vertically stretched, compressed, or reflected. So that's what you're going to put right here. They all contain points one and zero, but they all appear to be vertically stretched, compressed, or reflected. Okay, now. I know you're pretty smart, so let's look at number 9. Let's do a prediction before we even plug it in the calculator. So if I were to look at this 2, 4, and negative 4, they're outside of my parentheses, so they're not with my x. So if they're not with your x, they are your correct. They're your k. 
So how does K move up and down? Which is why we can predict and be accurate that they're going to have the same basic shape, but they're going to be appear to have been vertically shifted. Okay, pause the video. If you need to get all that down, let's go to the last sheet. I know this video is kind of long, guys, but this is important information that I really don't want to take up time in class to do. I'd rather you spend your time in class working these problems. So let's look at the last paper here. So now, I know that graph of logarithms can also be used to solve logarithmic inequalities. Now remember, inequalities is where I have a greater than or less than. So I can use tables to analyze these solutions. So I know that I have 1 plus 3 log x less than or equal to 2.5. So I'm going to put 1 into my y1 and then the other into my y2. So when I pull this up on the calculator, what I'm going to see is a point where they intersect, correct? So then according to the graph in the table, the inequality appears to be true where x is less than or equal to 3.16 because it's going to give you the point of intersection. So then you'll have to look at it to see where that part is true. And we've done this before, so that should be kind of familiar to you because I want the numbers to be less than or equal to 2.4 so where's that going to be at it's the numbers up here so that's what we're going to do we're going to shade the actual part so for let's take a look at number 11 so for number 11 I'm going to plug in 2 plus 5 log of x plus 6 in my y1 And I'm going to plug in 7 on my log 2, I mean my y2, because I want to know when my function is greater than or equal to x. So when I look at my table, I highlight all those that are greater than or equal to x, and what does it appear that the answer is? That it's a true statement where x is greater than or equal to 4. So that would be my answer for 11, where x is greater than or equal to 4. Now, don't forget, I could also do this with the graph. I would bubble in my 4, and then it would go off to the right side. Now, so let's look at the next one. So now I'm going to bubble in or plug in 4 minus 3 log of x in y1, and then... 3.8 and y2. Now I want to know when my function is greater than or equal to 38. So when I look at my numbers, I I'm only want to focus on those that are greater than. So I'm going to see now that the only ones that are greater than is this small section. And what are all those in between? Those are in between actually 0 and 1.16. And I can find that by finding what? That's correct, my intersection. My intersection is going to tell me that point. Okay, so I want you to go ahead and copy down the last one. And I will give you a chance in class tomorrow to actually plug this in and see what happens. Okay, so remember to pause your video, guys, if you need to get all of that. You've been great. I know this was the longest video we've had so far. So... Good luck, and I'll see you tomorrow.